I was being a little bit of a punk. I'm not going to... You told a cop that you, quote, didn't like his attitude. Okay. (laughs) That's not really the best idea. Well, only let himself on fire twice. Mm -hmm. I did tell you guys right before I left, I said, don't burn down the shop. And then Will burnt himself. And I came up with creative ways to make fires. This is the Scent and Bent podcast. Ethan just went to Hawaii. Will I and I were alone in the garage for a week. So mm-hmm. we have some catching up to do. Unsupervised. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> also, Will just had a pretty big court case arise that we need to hear about. Mm-hmm. And um, besides that, shoot. Not I much think else that's going what on. this is about today. But yeah. so yesterday, I we have a dedicated grind hard phone now. So it's the grind hard iPhone. It was on the table. The camera was on. And mm-hmm. I walked up and grabbed the phone, and I could just see my feet. And I was like, how is the phone floating here? And it was just on the table. But like, if it was over and I could see a little bit of piston, it, I would have realized why the phone was floating. Wait, so why? How did you think it was floating? Look. I'll show you. Yeah, I, I want, I I want I to see this. So, all I saw was my feet, and I was standing up, and the phone oh, was there. So you were there. only looking at the phone, <laughs> yeah. not the fact that the phone was sitting on a surface. And so then I lifted it up, and I saw the pistons, and I was like, oh. That's but, but what you, you got all the way. The, you got all the way to picking it up off of a surface to realize. Yeah. I was even asking the, Steve, and I was like, dude, have you seen this phone? And he was like, what are you talking about? And I was like, dude, I see my shoes. I don't know. I just thought that doesn't end. <laughs> maybe that is the situation. That's an Edwin moment right there. <laughs> Did you have too many sparkling waters or yeah, anything? I think so. Mm-hmm. It's the that will sparkling do it. waters. It does it I f- to me. I feel like people are going to think that we're joking. Uh, like, I, I, I think people, the amount that you talk about sparkling waters, I think people think it's like to cover up the fact that you actually just drink a lot of alcohol or something. Right? Like, <laughs> it's a sparkling water. That's right? actually No, yeah. it's actually sparkling water. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it just I don't know what it is, but they take me to another place. So that's that's how we ended up in the floating phone situation. Oh, okay. But oh, no. um but yeah, uh the while you were gone, I mean We built something. Well only lit himself on fire twice. Mm-hmm. I did tell you guys right before I left, I said, don't burn down the shop. And then Will burnt himself. And I came twice. up with creative ways to make fires that went really hot. Like all the fires I made were like jet fire. It was premium. I would mix a little bit of paint with a little bit of gasoline. And then I'd smear a little dirt in there and like make it into a jam. Like, you know, <laughs> like, like a paste. Yeah, like make like a paste. And then I'd smear that on all the logs. With with your hands? Yeah. With your bare hands? With like my bare hands. DIY napalm. <laughs> and yeah. then you'd light it while your hands covered in. Yeah. So eventually, like, I got pretty secure with this new fire jelly that I've been experimenting with because all I had was, like, all I could find was a couple matches and a lighter. And so, like, so, so what's wrong with paper and kindling well i split like a bundle of kindling before i know and i used those to like support the logs you know like i built kind of like a log cabin where i put like pillars down Uh using the wood you split and i used big logs on top the his jelly that he concocted (laughs) it was the hottest the garage has ever been like it was insane that's not how that works though because once you get the fire going, the heat's all coming from the wood. That jelly burns off in like yeah. a couple minutes. I think most. he just had it jam packed with extra the time. wood. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. So, but, yep. it, yeah. but the point is, the, the heat of the fire has nothing to do with it. I basically jelly came up to start it. with the fast food version of how you start fire. Like you, like <laughs> prepare the fire, you get it going no, in the morning. It's, it's I not smear. fast food. Will that takes longer? <laughs> you have to mix the chemicals together <laughs> oh, and smear them on individual pieces of wood. That takes way longer than just a piece of paper. A couple of pieces of kindling, or sometimes I use a can of spray paint as a little. Yeah, you know, we were doing that too. You know, but we're not as handy of fire starters <laughs> as you. But this day in particular, he got a little bit of the jelly <laughs> on himself oh, and no. then started welding. <laughs> And oh. let me just tell you, I had some pajamas. Last time I'll ever wear pajamas in the shop. I mean, I have, I have mentioned yep. that that's not a good idea yep. in the past. And all of a sudden, <laughs> I just combusted. <laughs> You'll have that on these bigger was, jobs. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yep. man. So, yeah. yeah that's there was cr- another situation we had with the furnace that uh, you haven't seen the video. So yeah, you don't no, know I about haven't. it yet. 
Well, I guess it's not a furnace, is it? It's a stove. I mean, you could call it. A I furnace. would call Some it a furnace. Would. It's it's a stove, a furnace, a heater. Oh, okay. A so stove, whatever you want to call it. So basically, we needed to extend a go kart, and mm -hmm. we got out the calipers, very fancy. And oh, I did hear about this. Stephen told me about <laughs> oh, it. Oh no! So we we measured the outer diameter of the go kart and the inner diameter and we wanted to do like you do like the yeah, sleeve over it, it yeah. sleeve so you find an inner diameter that fits both tubes and yep. then that's mm -hmm. the way to do it because sleeves are well, strong we couldn't find anything like that and at all. we don't know how to use the lathe at all so <laughs> i was like hey will what if we just heat up this pipe and hammer it on and he was like okay and then i came in and started editing for like an hour <laughs> i came out there Will has the pipes actually in the stove, like touching the fire. I thought he just put them on top to like warm up, but like in it, he's like, I'm getting them hot, hot. He burns it, he pulls it out. It's actually red hot. He's not wearing gloves. And he's like, oh, this is hot. He jams it on there, just starts hammering it in, and it totally works. The tightest so fit. That's better than the way Steven described it because he told me that you put both tubes, the inner and the outer one, in the fire and heated them both oh, at the same oh, time. And I was like, no. No, that no. is not how that works. <laughs> oh, no, because no. Stephen wasn't here either, so he yeah. heard the story yeah. I assume yeah. from Will, yeah. and then interpreted it. Was a, it was a telephone? Yeah. That, that's <laughs> yeah. But I walk in the garage, and like all of the tubes are just shoved into the fire. But mm -hmm. it I mean, worked, it works. Yeah, it worked really well. Therm thermodynamics yeah. is what you call that, I think. I mean, not really. But and yeah, sure. it was like <laughs> the first tube was the first test fit and it didn't really work because there was like a little paint that got jammed up in there so i learned to like you know smear some like oil like i used some used oil and just like smeared it on the mm, no on the go-kart great and then <laughs> no i just oil. wham wham <laughs> yeah yep. and there you yep. go no that there worked yep. another thing that's pretty funny is remember so it's a cbr 900 engine how yep. much do you think that weighs uh, I tried to Google it after uh, the other day. Um, I couldn't really find a conclusive answer because those any weight you find on the internet is like without carburetors or anything. Yeah. That's the whole setup with oil in it and stuff. But somewhere between 150 and 200 pounds is based on guessing and also looking at it or, you know, picking it up. <laughs> I felt like it was like a thousand pounds. So, literally, you know how you carried it by yourself from the side shed all the way around in the yeah. ice into the garage? Yeah. So Will was like, hey, like, help me lift up the motor when we're ready to, like, you know, mock up the motor to see yeah. where to build the motor mounts. And so I was like, oh, yeah. We grabbed it. We're like, one, two, three. <laughs> and we couldn't pick it up, the both of us. <laughs> At all. Well, I mean, I'll give you some credit, though, because if the, if I, I know how it's roughly set up in there. Uh -huh. You know, and if the engine is sitting in the middle of a table, you're trying yeah. to pick it up like this, oh, right. which is very different than picking it up right here. <laughs> well, thanks for giving us the benefit of the doubt. <laughs> but that's not how it was. <laughs> <We're t> <laughs> we're it was on the edge of the day. We were talking about transporting the oh, engine. No. Oh. <laughs> from the table to the other table. <laughs> Which is downhill also. <laughs> yeah. That's worth noting. So what we did was, is we rolled the two tables together and pushed it over. Mm-hmm. What? Oh, I thought yeah. you meant like the first attempt you couldn't pick. No, up. we just couldn't we, like actually at couldn't all. Pick it up. We we're so couldn't. weak and scrawny. <laughs> <laughs> the lumberjack is working well for you. I guess oh, so. I guess so yeah. But what we did use logs and stuff to, you know, uh, to we'd use your firewood. Technique no, to, to like balance it oh, and to, get to, it in the yeah, right yeah, spot. Yeah, yeah. wood works so, really well for. It's about one and a half logs up. I don't know what that measurement is. We learned that one from you. There's a lot of things we were kind of stuck and we're like. Hmm, what would Ethan, Ethan do? do? And then you could just go through old videos and go, hmm, how did he solve that? <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's pretty much how we figured out everything, yeah, really. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, what would Ethan do? That maybe you wouldn't have approved of. But, <laughs> I like, mean, there, there are, but that's okay. I, I don't have to yeah. approve everything. Yeah, yeah. we kind of, you know, I looked at that project kind of like a piece of art. Like ah. a Picasso. I didn't go in with a measuring tape. I didn't go in with a straight edge. I went in with my eyes and a vision. Uh -huh. And I just started heating things up in the one. Just, you know? Yeah. Getting things built. The one thing we did make sure, though, you know how the little scale device that tells you? Angle finder. Yeah. yeah. To mm -hmm. how you put that on the table or like any flat, the surface, flat part yeah. of the go-kart and then we put that on the engine to make sure the engine is flat to the go-kart did you also make sure that the axles are flat to themselves and the rest of the go-kart yeah th that's uh -huh. one of the one things that we did 
Remember? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we did that. Uh, sure. Yeah. We did do that. Yeah. Well, I mean, it helps that you're working with a really flat table. We so used that. To, table yeah. 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 Yeah, that that was helpful. Yep. Yeah. But besides that, everything went pretty smooth. Yeah. Besides Will setting himself on fire twice, blinding his girlfriend because he didn't tell her not to look at the oh, water. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> not being able to pick up the engine. Besides almost everything, it went great. Yeah. Yeah. I neglected to uh, tell my girlfriend not to look at welds. I just figured that they're brighter than the sun, you know, when you're looking at them, it's just really bright and painful, but she took a good <laughs> glance for like at least 10 minutes and burnt her eyes. <laughs> oh, I was, still can't believe that, dude. Yeah. It's kind of like the first, the first rule of entering a welding shop is tell someone knew to not look at the welders yep. no matter how yep. certain you are that they know yeah. i i Unless even like, taught oh, her yeah, i was welding the other day unless you know that they also weld you <laughs> tell them to not look at the welders he said that morning the next morning he was like i need to go to town and get some medical supplies but i'll be right <laughs> back and i was like okay and then that night he came over to one wheel with me and she was like she like put it was like the sun was down down yeah. and she put on her sunglasses and she's like oh and i was like what she was like oh the light is just so sensitive and then will was like so i burnt her eyes <laughs> sunburn in the eyes yeah so maybe your uh, endeavors were more successful than ours what in <laughs> hawaii a good vacation mm -hmm. oh i mean i came back pretty sunburned but other than mm -hmm. that yeah it was it was he burnt it was himself good. as well it's yep. not just us with the actual sun though yeah <laughs> when they come, when you go to hawaii do they tell you wear sunscreen yeah actually they do I do they oh <laughs> well not literally but i mean if you're going anywhere with anybody like official oh. you know like if you're going out scuba diving they're like yeah. well not scuba diving you're under the ocean but like, oh. you know if you're going anywhere where anyone's telling you anything they're like don't forget sunscreen. Oh, for example, we went on a whale watching boat and they're like, we have a big thing of sunscreen if you need it. Like, oh, even though the oh. sun was setting at the time, mm -hmm. they're like, just in case, yeah. here's the sunscreen. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so I guess you do tell people to wear sunscreen even yeah, if they're do. unaware. Any, anytime there's a situation where someone's kind of, um, you know, a figure of not necessarily authority, but they're in charge of a situation, mm -hmm. they let everyone else know that this is... The potential dangers of the situation, like, uh, you know, don't fall off the boat, hold on to something, put on yeah. the sunscreen, you know, yep. if you're in the mm. shop, don't look at the welder. If you want to watch, put on a welding helmet, yeah. you know, mm. wear safety glasses around the grinder. It's, it's a good teaching. Kind of it's a good teaching point. You know, I'm usually the one being told things, but sometimes I'm going to have to tell people to do things. This is so. true. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Wear your visors when you're looking at welds. I even taught her how to weld before she started looking at the welder. She wore the mask, so I was like, oh. But then she logicalized it as like, you use the mask to see what you're welding, what you do. But, you know, I just like, in my mind, I was like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. didn't, didn't quite connect. Yeah. No. Nope. <laughs> yeah. So how would nope. your, your court go? It went really well. Well, I guess we have a preface it with the last podcast was. Your an intervention, intervention basically it didn't <laughs> yeah. start off that way but that's what it turned yeah into. it got into an intervention but this time i think it was when we were going to pick up the uh key truck no it was before that what were we picking up the hayabusa ethan and i had gone and picked up the hayabusa uh -huh. and then when we got back i was like tired and I just hopped into lifted Subaru and this is before it had its turbo or anything. So it just had like multiple exhaust pipes coming out of the hood yeah. and it was really loud. And uh, I was filling up at a gas station and I pulled out and I did everything right. And I got pulled over and I got five tickets, one ticket for um, hooligan around. I don't, that's not what he called it. It was like something reckless very driving. official. <laughs> well, reckless driving in a uh, construction zone. And I also got a ticket for blowing through two stoplights. And I got a misdemeanor ticket for drifting in an all wheel drive 
lifted Subaru. With 31 inch tires. With 31 inch time, tires. No turbo, but yeah. you're just pulling out of the gas station. Yeah, just pulling out of the gas station. Well, didn't he even on the loudspeaker say, like, I'm going to. Not on the loudspeaker, but like when he came up to me, I was being a little bit of a punk. I'm not going to. You told <laughs> a cop that you, quote, didn't like his attitude. Okay. <laughs> That's not really the I best was, idea. I was just setting some baselines and I told him, I was like, I don't really like your attitude, man. And he was like, well, I'm going to teach you a lesson and i got five tickets that are really swindly because um in my previous life i used to drive cars really fast and stuff and previously i'm not allowed to get in trouble like that anymore or it's really bad so i was like <laughs> oh no like i didn't even do anything wrong this time so fast forward like multiple court dates and stuff um i chose to go to a jury trial which I didn't know meant a whole bunch of random people that like you would see on what the street. What did you think it meant? <laughs> so it was really embarrassing when I walked in there in like my sweatpants and my hoodie with Fritos and like some candy in my pocket, just thinking it was gonna be a normal day. And there's all these people here for me, no one else in there for any reason. You don't dress up for court? No. But Last time I wore my precedent. Crocs and like <laughs> swim trunks. I had just gotten done swimming. Oh no. Yeah. But this time I was like, you know, formally all in black, but it was like, you know, my sweatpants. But you pants. knew it was going to be a good day. Yeah, I knew it was going to be a good day because when I was getting the Fritos, this never happens. The Fritos are always on the top, okay? And there's a little mixture of those um, what you call them? They're like M&Ms, but they're sour. Skittles? Yeah, Skittles. So there's Skittles right below, and there was one, like, I pulled a full-on trick shot. <laughs> it was like this, and I just hit the button, and the Fritos came down, knocked the Skittles off with them, and I got two for $1. <laughs> so I kind of swindled the DMV or whatever, <laughs> the courthouse or whatever. Their, uh, I got them. Machine. Yep, I got them. So I knew it was going to be a good day when I went in there. I just wasn't expecting a whole bunch of random, normal people to be there. <laughs> so I went in and I went in with this little pouch that I bought for all the CDs that I've been getting from the courthouse. Cause I've been just requesting. I learned you can just ask for footage from police cars. So anytime get I get pulled over, I just stuff, always yeah. ask for it. So I have a little pouch now that hangs around my neck, like a nineties kid. And it holds all these CDs. Hangs around your neck? Yeah. It's like a little pouch and it holds these CDs. <laughs> like a kangaroo CD carrier. Yeah, like a kangaroo with CD carrier. all of carrier. your court footage. Yep, and I had five CDs that day. And I just walked in there and with my Fritos and everything. And <laughs> they swore us in. And the cop went up there and he told his story. And he told them that I was drifting and I was doing all this stuff. And then... I just like walked up there with my CDs. I put one in, DVD one, which is the video of me pulling out from the gas station and it just shows me putting on my blinker. My car was very loud and it was very embarrassing because <laughs> in front of all these people, it's like, wah, wah. And it's like, oh no. But uh, yeah, I went up there and I played that video and it just showed me driving super normally. And it turned out that the cop actually lied on the stand and because he said on the stand that you were drifting yeah he said like zone. i was blowing through all this stuff and just in the video was so embarrassing just to because i was sitting next to the cop i'm just like watching the video like <laughs> you just, you probably wanted to kill you yeah. at that point and i was like oh <laughs> and it just me like coming to complete stops so and he must stuff. have not known you had the cds mm -mm. No, and I also got the footage of him saying that he was going to teach me a lesson. And, oh, backtracking a little bit, though, I didn't know that when I brought it to jury trial that all the cases were going to be reopened. That's what was really scary because I thought, like, I had already finished these cases that could be potentially problematic to me, uh -huh. but instead I chose to go forward with them into a jury trial where I can be judged which, by my peers. Which cases did you think we were, you were finished with? My misdemeanor case, which was for reckless driving in a construction zone, which I didn't do, but I thought I had taken a plea deal for that where it was just blowing through a stop sign, but I didn't. And I just like 
forwarded it. So, <laughs> ah, <laughs> yeah. So when you had to deal with all of that. When your lawyer tells you what to do, mm? do you just like not understand what they're saying? Or? Well, usually they're w- there with me, oh. but this time I was like, I got the CDs. I'm gonna do this by myself. You chose to just not them. have a lawyer. <laughs> so this time I didn't bring my lawyer because you know <laughs> okay. that's at least like a WRX motor. So <laughs> okay. that you could have if you win the case. So you, yeah. know. you don't pay for the cost. So you of successfully yeah. beat a cop in court mm-hmm. with by a myself lawyer. with my CDs <laughs> equipped with Fritos <laughs> in awesome. pajamas. And I just proved myself not guilty, which was pretty liberating. And I'm a free man now. So you drop all charges. Mm-hmm. All charges got dropped, and the uh, what you want to call it? Judge. Yeah, the judge. The judge was like, "This is a disgrace that an officer of the law would lie in my courthouse," which was satisfying. <laughs> just a little bit more cherry on top. I do find it ironic that the officer's name was Lions. Mm. Yes. <laughs> Lions just drop be the lion. S, <laughs> Officer Lion. <laughs> lion. He be lying on the stand. So was this in Idaho court or Washington, Washington. court? Kootenai County. I thought. Wait. I thought. I don't get Spokane. tickets. I don't get tickets in Spokane. But you said you were leaving your shop. No, yeah, I was leaving my shop, but, like, going through Kootenai. Oh, so I thought you so, meant it was when you pulled no. out from your shop. It was mm-hmm. in, yeah, okay. Yeah, oh. and, like, he was, like, explaining all these things of, like, how I broke the law and, like, where the lines were and stuff. And in the video, there's, like, an inch of snow on the ground. You can't see any of the lines. <laughs> like, I'm like, what? So you're just completely making up some yeah, weird story to try all to this get you stuff. in trouble? Like, yeah, and he said that I had a silver hoodie on. I had a black hoodie on. He had to identify me, and he looked directly at me, and I had a black hoodie on, and he's like, he has a silver hoodie on. <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> Who was standing next to you? Just like random, like, there's like people behind me, you know? I'm like, you know how courtrooms, you got like yeah, the I've box. never been in court. Dude. Oh. You've never seen a movie with court? Yeah, like, I've seen a movie. I don't know how yeah, accurate Think of like are. Judge Judy or something, like the corniest of the corn. I'm in that courtroom, basically. You got people behind you, and then you have a prosecutor, and then you have you, and then you have... Okay. You know, so the people behind you the are just main going players. There. They're just like spectating, yeah. basically. They're spectating, and then they get to choose. They're like, what the devil? Oh. This man's a criminal. So the jury's the jury, behind you. Mean? Yeah, those oh. people. Okay. Yeah. I thought the jury was off to the side, not right behind you. They're like kind of like... I guess <laughs> maybe different courts are yeah. differently arranged. Yeah, so. and this one was like a long tube. A long like, tube court? Yeah, like it, it was like... They didn't have enough money for this courtroom, so it was like the side courtroom. Uh, but yeah, did, this is Idaho. <laughs> yeah. Did they did the, did they ask the jury questions? Like, did the did the judge ask the jury? No, it was like no. Yeah, just, it was pretty obvious. Yeah, it was pretty obvious. Yeah, <laughs> the officer was just completely making. But then yeah. the jury still goes into a room, decides their. Yeah, they can and like they talk and then yeah, come back and make that decision. And but. so it was like one person in the jury stands up like the movie and say, we plead not guilty. Or No, I think they just told the judge made the decision. So Because the jury's there if the judge like yeah. can't decide or if it's not clear. Yeah. The jury's there as like but a was, sexual... I've never been to one of these, so I don't know. But like, <laughs> it was pretty serious for me because um, if that case did go through, I'd be spending three months in jail. Mm-hmm. So... That's crazy. For just getting gas Even at a gas station. Even if you station. were doing all that stuff, it's crazy to go yeah. three months in jail for drifting in a construction well, zone. To be fair, it's all of those charges on top of all of the speeding tickets he's ever had. Oh, so it's, it's because like consecutive. Because technically you're on probation? Mm-hmm. Is that, oh. Yeah. Because yeah. just that, that instance alone, you would not no. be going to jail for three oh. months. You'd just be going to jail for It's that he already used up all of his free passes. Yeah. <laughs> oh. But if this happened in Washington, I just wouldn't even worry about it. Because I have lots of points that I can use in Washington. That's I've used my whole Idaho punch card, and I'm like at the very... I have no. to scrounge around for punches in Idaho. It was weird. When I was DJing in Florida, mm. I met a ton of people that didn't have driver's license because of street racing. Mm-hmm. Like they can never drive again. Yep. Never. They're like, oh, I used to have an Evo, and then my buddy had the Subaru, and we were going down. And it was always either a Subaru or an Evo, mm-hmm. and they're all ex-military, and none of them have driver's license. <laughs> were any of them Honda Civics? No. Yeah, that's because they're slow. <laughs> <laughs> they got caught before they did something so reckless. They got yeah, they got caught yeah. at the beginning of the yeah. race. Yeah. yeah. I don't know what it is, though. What is it about a Subaru that just makes you want to go... 
as fast as it can go. It's because they don't actually go fast. So, like, when you're, like, pegging the foot pedal, you feel like you're really going fast. Like, you're like, Wah! and it takes so long to get there, and that's when you get caught, and you have no more gumption to run. You're at, like, the bare top speed. The, the real answer is because you have to prove to the Evo boys that you're faster. Oh, and, like, that's, that I that's get. The, it's the rivalry, you know? It's yeah. a rival. That's why it's the Evos and the Subarus, because they have a rivalry. Like, yeah. Toyota... Who's the, who's who are you rivaling with in a Toyota? A Supra? Yeah. You know, like what do you? Mm -hmm. What's your rival? I mean, I guess maybe a GTR, but like, BMW. Those are way too unattainable for yeah. most yeah. people to even be street racing with. Mm -hmm. We'll just have to hope that the judge <laughs> Don't doesn't do watch that. this podcast. Yeah, he didn't look like an avid watcher, but he did give me a compliment on this. Really? Uh, yeah. That does not seem like the kind of thing a judge would. This like. guy was like chillax like really? i'd go longboarding with this guy he was yeah really, yeah <laughs> nice mm -hmm. yeah how, how's the normal fish tattoo healing is really good i've got all. like yeah. that's yeah. never going away steven uh, we might need to do a little touch up just to make it a little darker so people can see it better but yeah that's, i mean for one passive stick and poke that's a very solid yeah tattoo. i think it looks very it's nice deep. yeah you look yep. good in white Thanks. Yeah. For five seconds. For five seconds until just like my sweat drips down onto it and it's black. Yeah. But but if you look at the cuffs, they're already starting to turn brown. They, yep. <laughs> <laughs> I told you it'd be swindled by the end of the podcast. Uh, I'm sitting at a table with washed hands and I'm getting this thing dirty. I think your makeup's coming off. Yeah, on a little it too. bit. A little bit. Uh -huh. Just a slight. <laughs> Just a little one. Mm -hmm. So I went uh, e-foiling in March. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the that was pretty funny. Uh, that's an electric surfboard thingy, and the water was 36 degrees, and I put on my wetsuit, shot out in the middle of the lake. And my remote died. Wait, didn't you have to walk like yeah, you had to through, through mud first, much right? mud? Oh yeah, I had to walk through like at least a hundred yards of mud and then the lake and then when you get to the lake it's like it drains in the summer so winter. like it goes <laughs> yeah in the winter, it right? drains, <laughs> in the it drains in the so winter it, like the water it goes e like barely downhill so i had to go out like another couple hundred yards to even start foiling shot out the furthest i'd been away from shore is when the controller just died and then when it dies the motor locks because it doesn't know which way to go yeah. and you just go <laughs> And so then I was sitting in there in the middle of the lake, and I'm obviously the only one in the lake. And I was obviously. trying to hit the button over and over again to turn it on, and I had to paddle all the way to shore. So the question is, why did you choose to go in in that point of the lake instead of a deeper part, like where you could just walk in from, like, immediately? Hmm. <laughs> that would have been good. <laughs> that so been there's good. no reason. <laughs> there's no reason. Did you go in at... Farman's Park? No, I went because I went to City Beach first, and that was even more mud. And then I went to Memorial Field. And I was oh like, yeah. Oh well, this is. As what good about as the it gets. What about the side where the boat launches? Because that's like a deeper channel. Was it still frozen at that point, or on City Beach? Yeah. Oh yeah, it's pure mud. There's hardly even water there. Where we tested the jet boat. Uh, well, that really would be shallow, all mud. That used to be like a farm field before they people go the duck hunting. Oh, you know, really? Over there. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Um, when did they raise the level of the lake? Oh, I don't know, like the fifties or something. Oh. Oh, so I, my it's dog. not that I remember it being a farm field. I just know someone who, <laughs> yeah. whose like grandfather used to, you know, farm wow. that area. Oh. That would suck if your uh, inheritance was like this premium <laughs> field, and then it's just like flooded. Oh, like, you know. I would assume they probably had to buy the acreage from yeah, yeah from the farmer. Hopefully, like, yeah. otherwise you're kind of you know just yeah swindling somebody's livelihood. But, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Um, no, but the one that's kind of around the corner, like there's another boat launch just kind of around the corner from that that points straight out into the lake where it's, mm. where it's rocky instead of muddy. And there it gets yeah. deep. Rocks would be quicker. nice too because then you would oh, be. Oh, way better, especially yeah. since I have my wetsuit feet. Yeah. But what I was thinking is Bottle Bay is still frozen with ice and the lake isn't. Yeah. So we should put on wetsuits. Take out the mini jet there's, boat. There's no we in this story. It's okay. way too cold to be in the water. <laughs> I'll do it. <laughs> so then we straight James Bond jump the mini jet boat onto the ice and slide. That would be pretty cool. And that would be. We could make another jet boat video. The yeah. problem is we have to thaw the jet boat out first. It's currently a block yeah, of ice. It is. Because yeah. we have nowhere to store things properly. So it got filled with water and then froze. Such a shame. Also, before we do that, I have to put all the uh, plastic on the bottom. Oh, yeah. I and forgot we were so even going to do by that. By the time we 
do that, the ice will probably be melted off. The, the ice is end. almost all the way gone. I know. Yeah. There won't be much uh-huh. left. Well, we can do it next year. Yeah, we'll probably have two jet week. boats by next year, right? We have to I mean, build another yeah, boat this just, year. It's yeah. so much fun. That's one of the most fun things. It is, yeah. It'd be really fun to have one with two seats. So you can blast around. Yeah. That yeah. would be cool, yeah. Yeah, we need a slightly bigger boat yep. with more horsepower. Like a yeah. lot more horsepower. Yeah, like the, uh, <laughs> the, like the snowmobile engine that the Polaris guys were talking about. Yeah. The, uh, the, the Patriot Boost engine, which is like a... Turbocharged. 850... Two stroke turbocharged oh, makes 180 horsepower. That would be and how much does it weigh? Oh, I don't know. Nothing. No, not meaningfully more than the one we have in our oh. boat. I mean, because it's the same size engine, it's still a two stroke. I mean, it might weigh another 20 pounds or something because oh, the turbo. I love but. two strokes, <laughs> dude. That would be sick. That would be dangerous. We'd need a little bit bigger of a jet boat for sure because we yeah. have, to, have to have room for the turbo, turbo. and the, everything else. But I like the ones that almost have like a roll cage, those are so cool. Yeah. I mean, we could just build like a full 12 footer because like they have, um, or maybe 10. What's the next size up? I think because ours is a six. They don't make an eight or a 10. I don't think so. Yeah. 12 footer is like the 12, a 12 footer is a normal mini jet boat. Yeah. Um, and how much horsepower do those normally have? Actually like 300. A lot oh. of people. Yeah. So it wouldn't be an upgrade for that because oh. people put like, um, I mean, I don't know actually how much most of them have, but, um, Modern uh, jet skis are out of control, and they all have like four cylinder, four strokes that are supercharged in them, thousand cc nice. engines. So those oh make like gosh. in a in a factory um, uh, jet ski, they probably make I don't know two hundred or something. But with a little extra boost, you got a three hundred horsepower what four stroke. That's devil? what like Cletus McFarland his his are those. Oh, okay. So I've only... And I think they're claimed at three hundred horsepower. I don't know for sure, but okay. So, so you just take that jet ski motor out and put it in a boat instead of a jet ski. Yeah, exactly. What we did just with a... In a know, boat. In oh. a boat. Yeah, that's what most people do. And it makes sense because it's pretty hard to beat that packaging and it's already a jet ski yeah. set up. It's already meant for running water oh. and running direct Jeez, what drive. What does that and all feel that. like on a jet ski? 300? 300. 300 I, I mean, I'm sure there's idiots who have tuned them, but I mean, Jeez. a factory one. They're also pretty heavy. Like, they're not True. like... They're pretty big. Like, those yeah. are the big... You know, the big two-person like, ones. Yeah, not like three-seaters I've yeah, seen. Exactly. Like, yeah, exactly. We're not talking like a stand-up. Like an ocean jet. Okay, yeah. I was thinking yeah. stand-up. Yeah, no, I'm like, I've been we on don't, We don't have jet skis like that. That and no. I don't. No, no, but they're, <laughs> yeah, like those those ones are, yeah. yeah. Okay. And I don't, I don't think they have 300 factory. I could, I, I'd have to look it up, but I think Man, they probably geez. have like 180, 200 That is or something. lethal that yeah. they just sell that to people. I like the sound of a 12 foot mini jet boat with 300 horsepower. Well, yeah. Uh, see, but then we'd just be doing the same thing that everybody else does. We have to come up with something mm. different. That's why I think we need to talk yeah. Jetstream into making us an eight foot hole. Yeah. It's just a tiny bit bigger. Yeah. And then put the two stroke in yeah. that because people aren't building two stroke jet boats really. I mean, there's the little tiny ones like we built and now mm. those are kind of a thing other people are doing. Really? That. Yeah, most people put a 400 or a 300 single cylinder Kawasaki engine in them because they uh, Kawasaki made one for a while that was a single cylinder, three or 400 cc Two stroke jet ski. Oh, whoa. Um, so it's way smaller whoa. and fits yeah. in those boats better than our 750. Point. Yeah, that doesn't <laughs> that fit sense. very well. Uh, not as exciting, but you know, would work. Um, but then the, the, the next size up is the 12 footer, and everyone's putting four strokes in those. I mean, mm. I'm sure there are people who put two strokes. In fact, I've seen them on Marketplace for sale. But all the really high performance ones are four stroke because that's where the tech is these days. But snowmobiles still have two strokes and they have really good modern tech, like the, you know, yeah. the ter- factory yeah. turbo sleds. So it would be, be cool to do a perfect in a yeah. ten foot boat. Yeah, or an eight foot. I mean, two, only two. If you imagine two feet longer than what we have. Oh yeah, we can fit plus two the people. scale of there. <laughs> yeah, that is right. Because like the, the one we have, if you really wanted to, you you could probably sit two people inside of that hole. You'd be touching and squeezed, right? Yeah. So if yeah. you imagine it being two feet longer, of course you have plenty of space for the engine and more room for your feet. Mm-hmm. Plus, it would be by scale, I don't know, six inches wider or something, which would be enough that two people could be like. You know, Kinda medium jammed. squeezed. Enough yeah. to look tiny still. Yeah. But I think that would be... It would look first, really yeah. tiny to have two yeah. people in a boat. First, like we have that. to talk Jetstream into, like, scaling their CAD files and cutting us out a hole. For yeah. Because I, I don't like, want to build a hole from scratch. <laughs> I bet we could do that. I, I bet mean, we could do that. That's one of the most viewed jet boat videos, like, on YouTube. Yeah. And then the Hayabusa video is... If we so get ten percent more views in the Hayabusa video, it'll be the most viewed snow bike video on the internet. Yeah, well, and the other one, the other really contender cool. has been out for six years, and it's from Red Bull Media. So. Yeah. Oh, we passed runner. that one. No, no we no. haven't. But it's been out for yeah. six years, and so by time we've only ours has only been out for what three months. Yeah. So we're close. Two or three months. So what? For the most viewed 
snow bike video on the internet. Give it a couple more months and it will be. I mean, because that's yeah. cool. That is oh, cool. Oh, another thing I was thinking about passengers. So when we built the sleeper with the little Power Wheels Porsche yeah. body, we never really sent it with two people in it. I know. I, I broke it. Was, yeah. <laughs> Well, <laughs> well, and we just didn't think about it while we were out. You know, we were out get, trying to get all the shots, and we just didn't consider yeah. that as an yeah. option. But yeah, but that would have been so much fun. Yeah. Even just like if we both sat in it and did a wheelie, that's how we should have oh. broke it. That <laughs> would have been a good way to break it for yeah. sure. But we can do it once we rebuild it. What are your thoughts yeah. on that? Uh, I mean, well, the real question is if we can buy body panels for it because that one defender is just completely destroyed. Actually, um, from the tire exploding. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, mechanically. Uh, we have a bunch of go kart axles laying around, especially after your uh, oh, yeah. swindly project. Nice those are go-kart extra axle. premium go kart axles. So we'll take one of those mm-hmm. um, and, and just a real con- brake. Yeah. Also nice. Yeah. Well, I mean, it has it a had brake. a yeah, hydraulic. So I remember, I, yeah. I made an yeah. actual real brake on it. Yeah. But yeah, so I mean, the rear just would be pretty easy to swap it over to a regular go kart axle because I had already, and we wouldn't even have to change the motor, drive motor, or anything like that. And the front, would you just do custom? Um,. Yeah, probably. It'd be easier than... I mean, we don't have a front half of a decent go-kart just laying around, um, and it's not worth getting one just for that part. So, yeah, I'd just do... But it'd just basically be go-kart steering, just, you know, beefed up from what it is now. And then, of course, a frame to connect the two, because right now the frame is just like... Yeah. It's like a three-quarter inch square tube that's like, I don't know, a couple millimeters thick at best. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's that is really sketchy. thin wall tube. <laughs> so it worked for what we did, but if you're adding more weight everywhere, you can just kind yeah. of but I can use that still as a body mount, you know, like use keep that whole metal frame there, just use it as essentially something that holds the body together. And then yeah, front um front setup. A part of me wants to like go full suspension, like really tiny suspension like we did in the Camaro, but better. Oh, but that, that would be that would so be, much work. Yeah. Weeks, weeks work. <laughs> yeah. And it'd be kind of hard because we already like it it was already finished, so there's not really room for that many more videos. Yeah. Of, yeah. Like, people oh, have, look, we're people have already seen it. It's, no, it's already yeah. done and now you get to watch me build it for four weeks. Like no yeah. one's gonna care. Yeah. But one more, you know, another episode of like beefing it up and putting actual go kart tires on it. That would yeah. that would be cool, and it would look so good. With <laughs> yeah, some with the stance, stance boys. Yeah. yeah, it'd be nice to see if we can find some slightly larger diameter go kart tires. Because if we just put regular standard diameter, like the eleven and a halfs, yeah, they're uh, smaller even than what was on it. Yeah, so we can yeah, get around and see if actually those ones that came with the um, O'Reilly van. Um, oh, those, are, those might those, be a little too big, but they're big boys. It would be great. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <Yeah. laughs> those are probably something in the big, middle. That would look great on yeah. those, though. That'd I have one more grind hard update that I'll leave you guys with. Ah. Will's just getting Cindy ready for spring. He did the valves, mm-hmm. and uh, what happened there? <laughs> she blew up. <laughs> she, what, to be my... clear, before the story starts. <laughs> Uh, Will didn't actually mess with the valves or the che- he checked yeah, the valve I checked the valves and they were fine. So what's about to happen is not Will's fault. Yeah, carry on with this. I didn't. I didn't touch anything that would like make it do that. But um, maybe I just put it into the universe that it would blow up, and it did. But uh, yeah, you basically, did get a good rip in. First. I did, and it sounded really good. It started really good. Ethan taught me this new technique on starting Cindy, where like you check for compression, and then you just wham. Wham. Well, that's not starts. a new technique. That's a technique that anyone well, who's ever kickstarted okay, an engine okay. ever does. <laughs> okay, well, it's a new technique to me, and it works really well. <laughs> because before, I would just yee, 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 until I found, like, impression, and it would start. But mm-hmm. take it a hundred times. Um, but anyway, I think what happened is, well, I know what happened now is the chain tensioner. The cam chain tensioner failed. It failed, yeah. and then it skipped timing and just mm. yeet. And I heard it. The piston it. had valves for lunch. It did. Nom, 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 yeah. nom, nom. I don't know if we could show a picture in the podcast or something, but it is. it got tracked. <laughs> I was editing here, and uh-huh. then I heard you ripping around, and I was like, just got up to like go film you, and then I just... <laughs> and then you were like, oh... <laughs> It wouldn't even kick at all. I knew it was done. Seized. Completely mad. Seized up. But... There's going to be a lot of very awesome things happening to Cindy. She's oh, getting yeah. a whole new platform. Yeah. Well, so. the Timber Quad never really... It was really fun, and I'm yeah. really glad that we did it. Yeah. But we're kind of done with it. Yeah. And it was really fun to do side wheelies on with tires on the front or on the yard and stuff. But the engine was really tired. It needed to be rebuilt. And so we were like, doesn't make sense to rebuild this engine for this project that's already done. Which we've already... 
uh, oh yeah, no, well, you, yeah, yeah, what you were saying, yeah, the, yeah, timber. Quad. I thought, yeah, Fair yeah, enough. like it just didn't make sense to rebuild it to just have the timber quad again, right? Because we're all kind of done with it. Yeah, it wasn't that, and that's exciting. a really good engine. <laughs> yep, it's a, it's actually, it's in a Polaris, but it's made by KTM. Um, it's an adaptation of their, you know, 450 or 525 uh, dirt bike engine, just with a different transmission setup that has five gears forward and one reverse, which um, is. Which means so Cindy's gonna get reverse and more importantly electric start. Because, uh-huh. Yes, um, no more kicking videos no more kick for you guys. <laughs> no. We're gonna have reverse videos for you guys. Yeah, now. the internet so. does love little short videos of Cindy being kicked. Yeah, those are yes. some pretty high we viewed videos. But <laughs> yeah, I'm kind of glad not to hit my knee on the light bar like every other. Oh. Yeah, yeah, it's gonna be. And then when you stall it, just ring, 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 ring. yep. And then oh. if you get stuck, no more grabbing Cindy and no. eating her yeah. bow. And Back more up. power because we're yep. replacing the cylinder and the piston and With getting a, a 525. Yeah. Yep. yeah, because I did some digging around on forums and stuff and found that um, the head and the bottom end of the engine is all the same between the 450 and the 525. Um, and so you can just get a new cylinder and piston. That's the 525 one, and they bolt straight in. That's not the case with... Uh, probably the majority of KTM engines because KTM makes a million bore sizes of everything. Mm. So it we just got so happened. Lucky. That, yeah. Uh, well, I mean, it's the only one they've ever done in a quad, so it, that's kind of. Oh, okay. But, but yeah, a, a lot of their other ATV engine, or I mean, a lot of their other dirt bike engines, you can't just switch parts, or you have to like also switch the crankshaft because of different strokes and stuff. But anyway, point is, it's getting a big bore five two five, which is around the same horsepower but more torque, which is perfect for something like that. Where it's Absolutely a little heavier awesome. than the well, it's not heavier than the ATV, but it's heavier than the, a dirt bike would be. And yeah, it's yeah, it'll be good to have the little extra bit of torque. And how so, many motors have we blown with Cindy now? Uh, that's the third essentially. <laughs> well, it's two that have. Most people don't yeah. go so hard on their power <laughs> wheels they blow up <laughs> performance race engines. Yeah, so the first one we didn't technically blow up. Um, it just was abused when we got it. Mm -hmm. Um, and then it, um, and actually the first and the second engine were the same engine. The first one is the one that had the drag racing with Jay Leno on it, right? Yep. And, and somewhere in there, the head gasket or, and, or other things failed. And it was just like, it would just blow out. It it would just blow out all of its coolant right away. So, but like I drove it around all day in Moab with essentially no coolant in it. And we did the Jay Leno thing. With essentially yeah. no coolant in Did it. Did you see so. the Jay Leno episode? Dude? Yes, that is an insane <laughs> episode. He's just doing this drag pull, and all of a sudden the oil just goes <laughs> blast him with hot oil right in the face. I mean, you're wearing a helmet, but still a motorcycle yeah. helmet, not yeah. like a cover. Yeah, that was that was entertaining. Yeah, I forget <laughs> what I changed exactly. Before that, I changed the um, vent, the crankcase vent, because it was just kind of dribbling out. It, and so I changed something and it still had a vent, but it wasn't enough for the blow by because obviously that engine was very tired and it had a lot of blow by. So it just built up pressure in the, in just, the, um, in the valve cover. And then it just <laughs> popped the gasket once the gasket got nice and cause it's, a, it's like a big rubber, it's almost an O-ring. Uh-huh. So that you know, just got nice and warm and then it just went and just <laughs> all over me. It's so funny. I'm reading Adrian Newey's book on Formula One again. Yeah. And it's just so funny that a lot of the problems that these mega funded racing teams worth millions yeah. of dollars like the car itself is like a 14 million dollar car like and they just wreck them all the time and like yep. the little things that go wrong or overheat or cooling like what we're doing is like a scaled down version <laughs> of all of this crap and we're yeah. just doing it in your shed oh yeah mm-hmm. i mean it's the same kind of problems they're just scaled up in terms of size or you know budget or both but yeah i mean when you have four wheels and an internal combustion engine most yeah. of the problems are going to be kind of similar. But you look at it and like, I don't know, like unless you really see the videos and like the amount of work that goes into it, it mm. does kind of look like a toy still. But it's like a high oh, yeah. performance Yeah, it's machine. a high performance machine. <laughs> yep. Especially like the kernel. Like, yeah, that thing is a riot. Yeah. yeah, I was just thinking about that the other day. I forget exactly why, but um, I was thinking about the comparison between the uh, Barbie camper and the kernel. Mm-hmm. And like, obviously... Collectively, they're the two, you know, best and most refined power wheels that I've built. But um, in terms of like the driving experience, uh, what's interesting is that the Barbie camper, which was ba- built much more around just a already built ATV, uh, like that one's super fun to drive in a silly way, and it is very, very capable. Mm-hmm. But in terms of the way it handles and, and rides near. and stuff, it's like 
it's really entertaining because there's so much travel and it's such a short wheelbase that it's always like pointing at the sky or nose yeah. diving, you know? <laughs> and it's got all these weird characteristics that are like really, really entertaining and a lot of fun to drive. And it is still pretty fast and, and very capable. It's like road. a mini trophy truck is what yeah. it feels like to me. But the difference is that, uh, oh, this is what sparked it. I was actually watching um, just a little clip from uh, one of the trophy truck drivers ripping around in Mexico. Not actually competition, but one of their like, you know, I think it was a monster energy, you know, edit where they go out and film just like really cool shots of it rallying around. Yeah. And that's the difference is like the Colonel is a trophy truck. The Barbie camper is a monster truck. Like think oh. about, you know, monster trucks aren't actually good at like any sort of real racing or performance. Like if they go yeah. around a corner too fast, they just tip over. Yeah. But they do really hilarious stuff and they're really entertaining and they make a lot of noise and they're, they jump really high and they, yeah. they just do all this really absurd. Yeah. Antics, yeah. But like they're not, like they are extremely high performance in terms of all the mechanics, but like they're not going to win any desert racing. races. It's like, it's like <laughs> WWE versus like MMA, right? Yeah. Like monster trucks are WWE. They're just like, look at me, I'm a fast truck. <laughs> and then trophy trucks are like, Arr! yeah, you know, like over six foot whoops and a hundred miles an yeah. hour. For sure. And that's the difference between the Colonel and the Barbie campers. Like the Colonel weirdly for such a tiny little vehicle with all sorts of stuff packed into weird places into a weird little package it just works out to be incredibly well balanced and stable and like it just feels right and it yeah. sounds more performance it's yeah. not it's not just noise for the sake of noise it's yeah. like anyway and it does have a lot more power it does that's yeah. what scares me about the kernel is that it's not scary like yeah, when it's I'm so driving and Cindy, I always feel like I'm on the edge, so I know yeah. where the edge is. Yeah, you kernel, don't know where it I've is. I've never felt any kind of discomfort. I'm like, yep. I'm going so fast, so quickly, yep. and it just feels like amazing. Yeah, which I've, is probably what it feels like to drive a trophy uh, truck, trophy truck yeah. through the dunes. Like, yeah. you just feel like everything's premium until it's until not, it's not I'll premium. To, <laughs> I'll have to show you guys if I can find it the the clip that I was watching because it's pretty insane. He's like. He's in, um, uh, it doesn't matter. He's in some city in Mexico. And um, there's this, like, I assume it's, like, a housing development that didn't get built. Because it's, like, you know how, like, they cut him into the hillside? There's these little steps of terrace. Oh, yeah. There. Oh. And it's it's just that. And so the steps are probably, like, anywhere from the height of this table to, like, I don't know. It, basically, each step is about the height of this table. Mm -hmm. And he just goes down that. At, it's, like, step after step after step. And they're only yeah. about... Like, they're small. They would be for really small houses. So it's not, like, space to land and then hit the next one. It's, like, it's like, yeah. oh, like taking it's a like stairs. Yeah, yeah. Right. stairs. But they're, like, a little bit elongated stairs, uh -huh. right? But he hits that, like, completely diagonally, intentionally. Just goes not straight down it, mm -hmm. just, like, diagonally across it. And it's, like, what? you know, this steep with four-foot drops, and it just drives across it like it's a road. Like, the body of the trophy truck... It's just diagonally going perfectly straight, and the tires are just like. Whoa. Yeah, that's so. That's cool. insane. We need to make a, a proving ground for like the Dream Camper and the Colonel. Like, I mean, like the rally yeah. track. <laughs> but like, there's things stuff, like, yeah. like remember when we we're talking about the Boulder Pit? Yeah. Like, we need some like bigger rocks that we can kind of crawl on on the Dream yep. Camper. Like, it'd be fun, but not so big because we can't go to a real off-road park where it's like, because yeah, their tires. Then you tires can't are go. Yeah. yeah. We just need like nice this size river rocks like yeah. two basketballs like blah, 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 i kind of have a pile of those that we drove through with the unimog and stuff we just yeah. haven't really done anything with the power wheels on them yeah yeah um, well, I'm, we're gonna have a lot of fun when the snow melts i'm it's so ready for right the snow now, to melt it's still snowing, yeah. <laughs> and it's still snowing me too i'm ready it's for... ridiculous i like winter but when it becomes this kind of winter like mud mixed with like yeah. more of like a chocolate vanilla it's just vibe for it to melt so we can no, bust thanks. out the power wheels and the dirt bikes yeah. that's what you want yep yeah mm -hmm. The best time of year is when, uh, which sometimes it doesn't happen, but the best season is when the snow's all melted here and you could ride a dirt bike here and then there's still enough snow in the mountains that you could also snow bike. Yeah. That is That's nice. premium. Yeah, that's, it's also, except the problem is then your dirt bike is a snow bike, so you yeah. can't actually ride it on the dirt. Yeah, it's hard for people like you that have yeah. the one that you use for both. Right. Which I don't yeah. think is super common. I feel no. like most of the snow bikers we've met, like it's their snow bike. Yeah, because, I mean... Like in theory, yeah, you could do that. But at the end of the day, what's best for a snow bike is to be a, a race bike, like a, a, a motocross or supercross bike. Mm -hmm. And that's not good for anything other than supercross and snow biking. Yeah. Whereas like the trail bikes are really great for trails, but they do make an okay snow bike, but they don't have quite as much power and they're a little heavier. Yeah. And I mean, plenty of people use Is them. a Kawasaki still down or is it, could you uh, yeah, revert no, I, that I, to I a have dirt it. bike? And well, I mean, yeah, we could. Yeah. It's just the, 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 um, chain set up, set up i haven't oh, uh, fixed no. yet for the snow bike kit a few more tweakings coming our way 
I think uh-huh. we covered everything we sat out to talk about, though, I right? I think so. Yeah, How it's we pretty... How going, Stephen? 52 minutes. Hey, hey, that sounds like a podcast. Thanks for Premium. watching Sent and Bent. <laughs>